So we're back at Uncaged this year. We were really excited about this event. Last year, Tommy won, and we had high expectations going into this race that we were gonna do really well. I was really looking forward to it. There was a hundred some cars there. They did an awesome job. Honestly, Josh at Ohio Grudge Racing did an awesome job putting this event together and running it as best as he could with uh, you know, the time constraints that he had. Uh, shout out to D Team Racing for running the lanes and for organizing everything and fantastic job. Could, can't say much more about them guys. They just do an awesome job. This is this is to commemorate my good buddy uh, CJ Andrews. He's probably one of the first loyal diehard OGR followers and unfortunately he passed away from an infection uh, in April. So we wanna we're gonna kick the event off with a a burnout using his ashes and then I had this made for the family.
you want to do the recap for me? Recap why we suck? Alrighty, so that sucked. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, so first round, our opponent broke in the burnout, I believe, and gave me an opportunity for a competition buy. I had a pretty hot tune-up in it for as bad as the track is right now. Uh, traction control kept it in check, and it made it so that I didn't have to pedal the entire run. It pulled about 15 degrees out of it the first two seconds of the run all the way down. It hit the rev limiter once at like 0.1 second for the traction control. And it just kind of made it so I didn't have to abort the run. It went pretty decent. Uh, the left lane is awful. The right lane is a little bit better. I've been seeing people do wheelies in the right lane a little bit and the left lane like I've barely seen anybody go maybe a 1.5, 60 foot in that lane. It's just awful, it looks like. Hopefully it comes around when the sun goes down a little bit. And we've got a pretty tough opponent next round. These uh, Canadians, they're pretty fast. And, uh, they got the, I think they got the better lane. We're gonna have to, you know, make a perfect pass in that left lane and probably put in a lot of boost out the back to be able to catch them to make up for the difference in the 60. So I got three on the scramble if I need it. I'm just gonna do the best I can. It's kind of a one lane race. CO2 that makes the turbo spin faster. Faster? Yep. CO2. What's this thing? That's a that's a shifter that I don't have hooked up. It shifts it automatically. What?
obviously I didn't put enough in the car. Um, I didn't think that the left lane could even hold what the right lane could anyways at that point. I, even if I made the best pass that left lane could hold, I don't think I could have beat that car in the right lane. Um, he made a what I think was the fastest pass of the event. I mean, we literally went from a low six second track to a high five second track first round to a low five second track second round. My car ate, ate the tune up that I put in it, didn't spin at all. Um, I assume it could have taken quite a bit more, but I don't think I, I don't think it could have taken what the right lane did. Um, the track had just starting to tighten up and we just kind of caught it on the edge of, you know, three or four passes before that, I watched a bunch of people spin and it was still really greasy. I walked out there and then all of a sudden, man, it just got good out of nowhere. The track just tightened up and I just didn't put enough in it. The, the guys over there at uh, the Tangerine Dream, their crew, they did a awesome job. I mean, I would have never thought to put that fast of a tune up in my car, knowing that how bad it was first round, basically. They really swung for the fences and just nailed it. And I don't think anybody else went as fast as they did on that pass, second round, the entire event. Um, they told me what they went and I was just amazed. I, don't, I really don't think anybody else could mess with their pass that they made against me.
Good as salvage him, Chris. I can't even explain to you how hard it is to win some of these races that we're going to. Like, no prep and small tire racing is at its peak right now. And everybody wants a piece of the pie. And there's a lot of people that have money. There's a lot of people that have a lot of good people around them. There's a lot of good tuners and there's just, it's at its peak. And a lot of people have stepped their game up this year. We gotta keep stepping ours up because a lot of people have caught up to where we were for the past two, three years. And it definitely shows. Um, that's why we're putting the 388 and the Falcon here soon. That's why we're learning traction control. That's why we're putting all the, trying to put all the best stuff on our cars just to try to keep up. It's not easy at all. And uh, you know, sometimes you make changes and they don't work and you go back to the drawing board. We've been making a lot of changes to the cars lately and trying to, and, you know, some of them work. Like we've made a lot of changes to the Nova and it's gotten a lot better recently. We made some changes to the Falcon. We're still not sure if it's better or not. And it's really hard to test also lately because of with the cops and everything. So it's, it's extremely hard to win these races. And, we're doing our best, and we'll be back on top soon. You can believe that. I don't quit.